Hi, I am Pastor Richard Warnicke of Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, and welcome to our Thursday devotion. Do you know what the meaning of your name is? Every name has a meaning. My name, Richard, means the courageous one, the brave one, the strong ruler. Well, I'm not sure if the meaning of my name actually fits who I am. But think about Jesus, all of his names. The meanings of his names fit him perfectly. Savior, the one who rescues us from the pit of sin. Christ or Messiah, two different languages, but they both mean the same thing. The one anointed, handpicked by God to be our prophet, priest, and king. Or Jesus, the one who saves. It was God who told Moses to tell his brother Aaron, the first high priest, to place his name on the people of Israel as a blessing. This is what he says in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons that this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. God tells Moses to tell Aaron to place his name on the Israelites. What is God's name? The Lord. What does the word Lord mean? Moses defines it beautifully in Exodus chapter 34 when he says, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. The name Lord means the one who loves us, forgives us, and is compassionate. And in this blessing, the word Lord his name is used three different times. Many theologians, and I would agree, are suggesting that this would make reference to our one God being three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Lord bless you and keep you. Well, definitely that would point to God, our Heavenly Father. How is he a blessing? Luther says this in his explanation to the first article of the Apostles' Creed. He said, the Lord gave me my body and soul, my eyes and ears and all my members, my mind and all my abilities. And he richly and daily provides clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all that I own. Just think of how our Heavenly Father provides, blesses his children, gives us everything we need temporally, physically, and also spiritually. He gives us the ability to work, our homes, our talents. He gives us everything we need. But not only that, he keeps evil away. He protects us until one day he will deliver us home to heaven. We have a Lord who truly is a blessing, our Heavenly Father. But what about Jesus? The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Here it's... Martin Luther that also says in his explanation to the second article of the Apostles' Creed, Jesus has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just think of what Jesus has done for us. He gave up his throne in heaven to come down into this world, and for 33 years he lived a perfect life for us in our place, giving us credit for his perfection. And then he took our sins upon, the, upon himself, went to the cross for us. He became our perfect scapegoat so that, again, our debt would be paid. We could have peace with God. And like a father and mother smiling down on their baby, their children God smiles down on us in Christ. We are truly blessed because we know our sins have been paid for. We have life with our Lord. 
But then the Lord turned his face toward you. The Lord give you his favor and give you his peace. Just think about how the Holy Spirit works, giving us that certainty that we have peace. Luther, again, in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed, says, God called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. Isn't that the work of the Holy Spirit? He has called all of us by the power of the gospel out of darkness into his wonderful light, the gospel in word and in baptism and in the Lord's Supper. He continues to strengthen me so that I can live my life to his glory. But he has brought us into his family. The name that we have, we are Christian. We belong to God, children of God. Isn't that what Peter says in his first letter? You are God's chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a prized possession of God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. We are truly blessed, not with just names that have meanings, whether they fit or not, but the Lord in our life, the Lord who is our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who blesses us now and forever, may we rejoice in the name that we have. We are his children forever, the Lord's children. May we praise and thank him forever for what he has done for us, the only name that saves. We pray, Lord, thank you for sending us your name and placing it upon us. We are now truly blessed. May we live to praise and glorify you forever because of the name that we have, your name, the Lord, our life now and always. Amen. Rejoice in your name. Rejoice in the Lord's name. It gives us life. Until next time.